You ever working on a project and you keep putting something off and you're like, nah, I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna wait, there's something else I can do. Nah, I'm gonna wait because I need to do this first before you do that. And then eventually you just say, screw it, I have to do this, I need to do it. That's the situation I'm in right now. I was hoping to have my patch panels this weekend while the body was on the chassis I could get my patch panels done finish up kind of the sheet metal portion of this car or build but that isn't my situation at the moment so in order for me to kind of do all the patch panels I, I want to have them all at the same time but that's just not the case right now so what I need to do is I think I just need to lift the body off the chassis kind of speed up the process I gotta move the motor backwards towards the car and I'll set it down on the ground on a tire. At that point, I'm gonna strap up the body again. I'm gonna lift the body. I'm gonna move the body out to the front portion of the garage near the front door. And at that point, I'll be able to lift the motor back up, move it backwards and set it down in the chassis. And once that's all set in place and kind of where it needs to be, then I'll be able to set the body down. But as I set the body down, I'm gonna end up having to cut this firewall out. I'm not exactly sure where I'm gonna have to do it yet, but we'll figure that out as it, as it comes up, you know? So I'm gonna move you guys over and we're gonna get things kinda moved around. All right, so you can see the motor over here. So we gotta get this front axle out of the way. I'm gonna move that front axle and get it out of the shop because it's in my way and I'm not using it. I'll move you until I get the motor, the body off the off the chassis. And then I'm gonna have to move you again because the body's going right where you are, more or less. And I'm gonna try this for the first time. I want to thank Bill Spalewski for that. It's Allie's dad. Allie's dad saw me lifting the body with straps and whatever else I use, and he said, "Hey, give this to Mike. I think he can use it." So definitely a huge thank you to Bill. Thank you, Bill. I appreciate it. I know you watch these videos, and I appreciate that also. Let's, uh, so I'm gonna throw some tape around the door real quick just to shut the doors so they're not flying over the place. Passenger side should be good. The driver's side, I'll just tape it up real quick. Better than nothing. I got no latch. I don't have a latch on this door. Now, I'm not going to avoid complete catastrophe with plastic tape on the door, but better than nothing. All right, let's get some uh, straps on this thing and see if we can get it off the, off the chassis. It should come off pretty easily. Famous last words, right? Oh, now I can't. Ah, damn it. Now I can't get in the damn car. <laughs> oh, well. I may end up having to lift up my entire my entire uh, gantry crane because with this this strap here, I think it might be I think the actual strap might be a little too long. But we're gonna try it here. Man, I feel fancy. I don't often get fancy. Well, this might work. All right, let's see. So like I said, my gantry crane itself is a little short and that little strap mechanism is maxed out. So I guess I could probably raise up my gantry, but I don't want to do that with the weight of the body on it. So I'm going to see if I can get it off of the chassis just the way it is right now. I think just by lifting up the back, it'll go. I'm gonna get drunk and smoke three packs of more And part of me thinks I ain't ever gonna make it back I 
could not do what I do without this cantry crane. I am on kid duty later. I have three kids or four kids at the house later, so I'm trying to get as much done this morning as I can. That went too far. You've gone too far! never fitted a small block Chevy to a Model A chassis, but I heard it's been done before, so I'm pretty sure if someone else can do it, I can do it. Kind of need my equalizer. I didn't put it on. Got this downdraft tube here. That, that I'll move like that, I guess. <laughs> Alright, so the balancer is caught on the front cross member, which I'm not surprised. Let me grab a little pry bar and see if I can just bump it back a little. I need to get the transmission underneath the rear cross member. Like this. There we go. Like a so. Ba-boom! Hey yo! Yeah, let's put that right there, that's good. Now we need to go up. But I can't because the cross member's in the way. And I can see the motor has got to come forwards quite a bit. Uh, or does it? Yeah. It's gotta come up, I know that. It's gotta come way up. Way up. Alright, so I need to notch my transmission cross member. So that's, I think, at this point, the first thing I need to do. Get that notch so I can get the motor and transmission up. Whatever I take out, I'll make sure I add some structure and support to this transmission cross member. Not to mention, I'm going to add an, an additional cross member wherever I need to for the actual transmission mount. But these Model A cross members don't usually work with a transmission like this. So I don't want to remove it entirely. I want to remove what I need to. Not, not forgetting that my body mounts on the front of the body mount through this cross member. So I need to retain that. I need to relieve that cross member. That'll allow me to bring the motor up and then maybe do a little bit of finagling with this front cross member where the stock Model A four cylinder mount attaches to the motor mount. I'll probably have to relieve that a little bit. It's a pretty typical thing. So let's, uh, let's get to cutting. I bought something last week off a friend of mine who I haven't seen in years. We used to race dirt bikes together and he sold me his plasma cutter. Now I do have a plasma cutter here in the shop and that is a Yes Welder. My, my hopes in the future is to purchase a plasma table and I wanted to upgrade my plasma torch or plasma cutter. So I bought his used secondhand hypertherm plasma cutter off of him. I'm really excited to use it. Obviously those are kind of like the best of the best and I want to set myself up for the future So I spent a little bit more money on something really good even though it's secondhand He really took care of me gave me some consumables with it uh, That the the head the tool head to use with the plasma table because he has one Because um, he upgraded and bought a brand new hypertherm So I'm gonna go outside grab that I'm gonna cut out that cross member with my new hypertherm plasma cutter Let's do it Alright, I got my new Hypertherm 45 Power Max all set up. I'm going to start getting rid of some of this metal.
so I need room for my front pulley. So I'm going to have to put that on. This definitely has to come up quite a bit. So I think I may end up having to actually remove the center section of this cross member, which will then in turn, I'll have to create a little bit of a tunnel between the seats, which is fine. I actually already have one that is in my container from something. I bought it from somewhere, I'm not sure. And then these, this mount may just end up being just for the body, because that definitely needs to come up quite a bit. Still need to go up. Yeah, I'm gonna cut that cross member right out. I hadn't planned on needing to do that, but I gotta do what I gotta do, right? All right, so definitely some changing going on. I screwed up. I should have I should have braced the back of the frame before I cut the cross member out. I didn't. So I'm gonna have to kind of figure that out in the future. But for right now, what I'm doing is, I just need to get my motor mounts mocked up. So I'm gonna get these bolted onto the side of the motor. I'm gonna get the bolt cranked down on my biscuit. And then I'm gonna get these set inside the frame. So I can figure out exactly where the height of the motor needs to be. Then I'll know exactly where I need to make my transmission cross member or the mount. I have a few cross members here. Uh, I may be able to end up using one, hopefully, otherwise I'll just buy something. I'm trying obviously not to spend money if I don't need to. Let me get these mounts bolted to the front of the motor, or the side of the motor, or the block, and we'll get this motor set in place. I'll get these tacked up where they need to go for now, and then we'll go from there. So I'm going to focus on this particular portion of the mount first. I'm going to get this mount connected to the side of the motor, but first I need to get the old ones off. I already did the driver's side, so I'm gonna get this, where is it? I've got my knee pads. So again, I just wanna focus on the actual portion that mounts to the block at this point. That's these three bolts. I know I mentioned it earlier, this, this particular kit came from the Roadster shop, and they had the best kit for the best money. So it kind of made it a no-brainer, you know? Now I had said it in other videos, or an earlier, or maybe even earlier in this particular video, I've never put a small block Chevrolet motor in a hot rod. I'm not against them, but I've just never done it. So I don't necessarily know all the steps that I need to take beforehand, like with a flathead. Because I've done a few of those at this point. But I didn't have one, so we're not going that route. Like a melted motor mount or something. I don't know. It's like the rubber from the motor mounts melted or something. Yeah, it's just the actual rubber from the mount itself. There we go. We'll get this side put together and then we'll get this motor slid down onto the frame rail and figure out where things need to go. I'll get everything marked with a with my Sharpie. After that I'll lift it back up. I'll get everything cleaned up where things need to be welded. And then I'll get everything welded or at least tacked in place to a point. I'll lift the motor up, I'll get everything finished welded. But first what I need to do is I do need to kind of try to pinch those frame rails back into place in the back of the car before I go any further. Because I certainly don't know, I don't have any issues with putting the body back on and having it not line up. Now this is essentially an early Ford motor mount. This is what you'll find from most companies when you purchase a motor mount for a flathead Ford, you'll get the angle bracket here that's bent in a press brake and then the actual biscuit itself. You don't typically get this other portion because that's specific for 
a small block Chevrolet. Get it snug so if I need to move it around I can. All right, let's get this lowered down and figure out where it's gonna go. This is the exciting stuff. This is the part I like. This is when you learn. The fabrication process is typically the learning process, which is fun, you know? At least I think. What I want to do first is I want to put on my crank pulley to make sure that I have clearance and if I don't, I'm going to have to relieve the front or the back edge of the, the cross member. So this is my crank pulley. It just has three bolts that bolt onto the balancer, I guess. Okay, so one, two, three. One. Sorry if I'm in your way. I kind of need to be here, you know. Two. Luckily, it removed some paint whenever the uh, previous owner took the, the motor out and I could see exactly where it went. Well, you know what? Every video, hopefully you guys learn something. And even if you're not a small block Chevy and a, a Model A hot rod guy, there are people out there that are. And, you know, or that's the car that they bought and that's what it had in it. That's what makes the world go round, right? A gentleman tell me that these are belly button motors. I never heard that term. And I really don't care if he thinks it is or it isn't. Hot rod's a hot rod. As far as I'm concerned. If it gets you down the road and it puts a smile on your face, who gives a shit what anyone else thinks, right? And I think I'm going to relieve this. Otherwise, I'll never be able to get a fan belt on it. I want to show you guys what I'm talking about. So if you're building a hot rod and you think, oh, well, look, my, my, my crank pulley fits behind my cross member. In the future, when you get to a point when you're going to put your fan belt on, you won't be able to. There's no way you can. So you end up having to cut your cross member. So while I have everything out, I'm going to move the motor back, just slide it back on the trolley and get this relieved so in the future I can add or remove my uh, fan belt and then obviously it'll it'll help me with uh, where the motor needs to actually go and in the same time I'm looking at where my steering box and everything's gonna go and I think uh, I think it's actually gonna work out pretty good all right let me get the front cross member relieved real quick Probably about a half inch space between either the bottom of the frame if I put the mounts lower or if I raise them all the way up to the top lip it'll be a half inch on the bottom I'm not really sure at this point what I want to do I mean I guess I'd like to keep it as low as I could it doesn't look like the oil pan is gonna be too low but again I don't I won't know until I won't know until the car is sitting on four wheels and tires but I would say roughly that's that's about where the motor needs to go. Get everything set where it needs to be. I want to measure from some locating points on the frame to the front edge of my motor mounts to figure out exactly where those are and if they're in the right spot. As long as everything's even and the motor's met even. So what I'll do is I'll measure from the side of the frame to the center of the, the output shaft and the transmission from both sides, from the outside edge of the frame. Figure out my center mark. Once I have that centered, I will then know exactly where my motor mounts are going to go. There's a lot of play in these motor mounts, so there's a lot of wiggle room with these mounts, with the rubber biscuits. If it's close, you're good, but it's got to be pretty close. We're not talking big, big movements. You know, you can move it, you know, an inch or so here and there from the back of the motor to these motor mounts. You have probably about an inch side to side at the transmission. There's a little, there's a little uh, insight. The motor on my T, on, on my 27 Roadster, 
is actually offset an inch to the passenger side. So if you're ever walking over, if you're ever looking at my Model T Roadster with the flathead V8 in it, you'll notice the whole motor is moved over. The reason I had to do that was to fit the steering box. So it goes to show you that even though things aren't, aren't dead straight right in the center, they don't always have to be. And that's a perfect example. That car will do 65, 70 miles an hour down the highway, no problem whatsoever. The flathead doesn't particularly like it, but it will do it. So that being said, let's get some measurements, figure out where everything's going to sit. Once I know, I'll just make some marks on my frame, and then I'll get some things cleaned up, and then get the uh, front, the motor mounts welded, and then I'll figure out what I need to do to create a transmission cross member for this. And then once that's set in place and it's sitting on the chassis on jack stands, I will then put the body back on and start kind of hacking away at the firewall to get the body sitting where it needs to sit with the motor and transmission in place. This motor does run. This came again out of a 1960 Chevrolet Impala. Whether it's the original motor, I don't know, but from what the gentleman said, it sounded like it was. It, it appeared to be a very unmolested car, and it was an Arizona car. All right, let's, uh, let's get some measurements done. All right, guys, kind of boring stuff at the moment. I'm just trying to find points on the frame to measure to make sure that the motor is sitting square and centered. So far I'm doing pretty good. I'm actually doing really because everything so far where I'm measuring from has been even. So this particular motor, this particular chassis, I'm 13.25. So it's the frame here at the front of the harmonic balancer and crank pulley, the overall width is 26.5. The center is 13.25. So I measure 13.25 and I get the exact same measurement at this point. So that crank pulley is in the right spot. So Roadster Shop clearly fabricated these motor mounts to be exact. The exact measurement where this motor needed to sit in this particular frame. So if you got, and I'm obviously not getting paid to say this, if you guys are putting a small block Chevy in a Model A frame, go to RoadsterShop.com and buy yourself a set of their motor mounts. You'll, you will be happy you did. It is probably going to save you a boatload of work because it's going a lot smoother than I thought it was going. So at this point, I'm 14.25 inches from my center mark on my motor mount bolt to my radiator mount hole, the back edge of my radiator mount hole, so 14.25 both sides. And then my rear measurement center line for my transmission, the output shaft, the overall measurement is... 31 and a half and my half my center line is 15.75 that's easy measurement to get once I get these tacked in place so at this point now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a square create a line here on my frame so I know where my center mark is and I'm just gonna kinda get all the areas around it cleaned up get the motor set in place it's centered on the chassis where it needs to be see the front of the motors in line with the hole in the cross member. I got my measurement. I got this brace set in the back, so I got the, the frame pinched back in where it was. You get that all set. You can see the tail shaft is sitting on a jack stand. So what I'm going to do now is I actually think I'm going to weld another one of those, which is right there, on the underside of the chassis. So then I can cut the welds on this one, and I can get the body hoisted back up and set back on the chassis at the same time I'll relieve the firewall and using that plasma cutter it'll go hopefully pretty quick so I want to just do a quick walk around it's a downdraft tube probably gonna have to do something about this uh, you know probably like tuck it in or maybe get like an early Ford one there uh, uh, metal tube but it's flexible um, but you can see I got my motor mounts tacked and I got some pretty good pretty good welds on them I mean the motor's sitting in there on its own minus the tail shaft sitting on the jack stand but I got I put the pulley on as you can see you can see where that would have been an issue if I hadn't removed this portion right here of the front cross member so it overhangs it just a little bit I think I'm gonna have enough room here behind my radiator to run the fan so what I think I'm gonna do we've got the stock fan right here so the stock fan has this mount on it and I'm probably gonna end up cutting that down so I'll end up spacing it out just enough so the fan won't hit the crank pulley so I may end up having to shorten the fan blades just a touch no I think they're gonna clear 
So I'll end up shortening the snout on this right here, this aluminum piece. I'll probably put that in my bandsaw, but that'll move the fan back and that'll allow me to put the radiator there. Uh, but all in all, pretty happy. Went, went pretty smooth. Uh, let me get that piece welded on the back of the chassis again underneath. And I'm going to set the body back down and see if we can get this thing mocked up with the body on it today. the way I mounted the motor mounts on the frame rail, putting them down to the bottom of the C instead of the top edge of the top of the frame rail, or the underside of the top of the frame rail. I'll make some measurements real quick and then uh, I don't know, get out the plasma cutter and start removing some metal. I would love to get the body of this car sitting where it's going to be by the end of this video. That would be pretty cool. Did I have the heat going? Sorry. See, I can see my own breath. I'm going to show you where I'm measuring and I'm going to explain why. Uh, again, I've never done one of these cars as far as the small block Chevy goes. But, I mean, it's all the same. There's something in the way you got to remove whatever's interfering. And this is in the way of my transmission. So what I did was I just measured up from the frame rail. It's about eight and a half inches and that'll give me a little bit of wiggle room. That puts me right about to the bottom of that block. Actually, no, it was a little bit, a little bit above it there. So it's just a little bit above that. It's about eight and a half inches up from the top of the frame rail. Then I want to measure how far it is. So I got four inches, about six inches from this outside edge of my floor structure. draft tube. That road draft tube is this tube right here. It comes up, it's got a little loom here for the spark plug wires. And it goes up to the back underneath the back of the distributor and that is blocking the firewall from letting the body down onto the chassis. So I got about three inches or so. It's got to come down. Unfortunately when it comes down it's probably going to come forwards a little bit and this firewall will interfere with that distributor. So I am going to need to relieve that, which I kind of knew. But I'm going to take my Sharpie and just kind of mark this up. And we're going to just relieve this area for the distributor. 
and then get this thing set in place and I'll have to build some stuff around it. This is the downdraft tube, the road tube. This is for the crankcase vent. I'm gonna remove this, but I'm just gonna put this to the side, but I'm gonna put something covering up that hole, make sure nothing gets in there. the transmission now <laughs> whoops it's getting closer you see my issue I have issues so now I got to cut that so let's cut that making it all fit tape measure nine inches back and then I'm gonna just uh, cut out whatever I need to cut out I'll grab my cutoff wheel and cut the structure the floor structure out first and then probably just plasma cut the floor so for my edge 12 inches 12 inches all right it's so 12 inches now this will be covered by a hump, you know, like a transmission bump, which like I said earlier in the video, I actually have one. I found it in my shipping container. I actually didn't even know I had one. Off the door, use it for a template. <laughs> Let me grab my cutoff wheel. I'm going to cut these two pieces here first. I have a piece of floor structure here. I'm going to cut that. Yeah, I'll just cut the ang cut the circles with my plasma cutter, and I'll do the rest with the my uh, cutoff wheel. my body holes those are lined up and I already knew the back ones were lined up that's pretty much it you know now I'll have to add some structure to connect the the floor structure underneath here and then this is going to be where my bubble is going to be my transmission bomb but all in all not too bad not bad for a six inch channel Dun, dun. That was very dramatic. Uh. <laughs> There's my puppies. There's my puppies. Hi, Hi Izzy. Hi, Harlow. 
All right, I'm gonna do my wrap up. Huh? You wanna do the wrap up with me? Sure. Nuggy, you my glove. You're a glove thief. So, do you see all this work that I did? Wow, Michael, you can't even see my face. This looks at your balls. Yeah, well, that's what people wanna see. I'm okay. giving the people what they wanna see. Huh? <laughs> So this is my beautiful car that I, I put all this dedication oh, and hard work into. No, but really, it's so Michael, beautiful. so Michael's able to do all this. I, you know, went food shopping, did our laundry. Very supportive. We did our freezer. You're not even on camera. Yeah, because you have it aimed at my ball. I'm sitting here. This is my spot. All right, everyone. Well, that's a wrench. You can't eat it. That was a very productive 30 yeah. minutes. 30 minutes? Was I out here 30 minutes, right? Yeah, 30 minutes. 30 minutes. 17 hours. You heard it from Allie. 30 minutes. Hi, Nug Nug. We got a lot done today. I say we because you guys are here with me, so instead of just me in here doing it, I'm doing it for you guys. We got the front axle kind of temporarily mounted with the U-bolts. I got the motor mounts set in place, mocked up, welded in place. Some heavy, some heavy tacks. I have a jack underneath the tail shaft of the transmission. And at that point, my next big step was to get the body set down over the motor, sitting back on the chassis. You guys saw I just took the plasma cutter, cut out the firewall as I went, and made measurements from the top of the frame rail to all of the points where I knew it was going to be an interference issue, which was like the top of the bell housing, the distributor. And I got those areas cut out with the plasma cutter. I got the body set down on the chassis. And at that point, I realized my floor structure now was going to be interfering with the back of the transmission. So I just wrapped up doing that, cut down everything that I needed to cut out as far as the floor structure goes. I'll have to rebuild the floor structure now uh, to kind of you know, give it that integrity that it lost because I cut some of it out. Uh, but once that's all said and done, this body is set where it needs to be. The motor and transmission are set where they need to be. Now that there's weight on the chassis, I can work on the front axle, I can get the caster set where it needs to be, I can get my wishbones mounted, all that stuff. So big, big steps today in the shop. Uh, thanks everyone, I appreciate you guys following along and uh, I appreciate all the support and you guys enjoying this build. A lot of new subscribers jumping on board which is really cool. Uh, yeah, just going to keep this thing going. Hopefully within the next couple of weeks between work and hopefully having a little bit of time that I can spend in the shop, I'll be able to get this thing rolled outside. Everything finished welded that I'm going to weld and get this thing up for sale. So thanks everyone. I appreciate you guys following along. Thanks and everyone. I appreciate all your support for me build on this build that I've done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Appreciate everything that Allie's done. Always a huge, huge help in the shop. See you guys. Take care. Bye-bye.